Mike delivers from his wife's cat's his own living room. Here's your host, Mike Baseglia. That's right. This is Mike delivers episode number 130. And I'm your host, Mike Baseglia. And I'm coming to you from my wife's living room kitchen area in Bloomfield, New Jersey. You can find this podcast where all major pods are found. Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, whatever is your poison of choice, you find it, we're there. Check out the Mike Delivers podcast. Jessica, welcome to the end of Side Dish Month. French Fry Edition, McDonald's, Burger King, a classic battle like we've never seen before in American history. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm confused why you don't get that this is the kitchen. This is because the intro, it says the living room area. Oh, okay. So we got to mix it up a little bit. Do you okay. listen to the podcast? Yes, I do. Do you? No. <laughs> I do sometimes. Once it's, I, Well, I listen to it to edit it, so I, I don't... I do listen to it, yes. But I guess... I, and I do download it, and make sure you download it. But yeah, I don't know if I listen to it per se once it's out there. Yeah, I do. But, well, thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for downloading. Did you rate, give it a five-star rating? I, at some point, I definitely did. Yeah, I definitely was like, give it a five-star right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll get into the end of Side Dish Month, our favorite sides from the month. But I want to say, this will be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to this on Patreon. We're going to do this. Um, this will come out on Patreon in a couple of days. I'm really excited for this, though. We will be doing a side... Of linguine in red sauce. Wow, you're being really specific. It's got to be linguine from the Olive Garden. Okay. And it'll be going up against a local spot in town, (laughs) which I know what it is, but I'll... I'll, Did I tell you what I want to do? No. Um, I'll I'll, I'll write the letter it starts with. Okay. And then you'll know. Um, I don't know. Oh, because... Okay, got it. That makes perfect sense, except... That letter could look like other letters in a different direction. That's fair. That has a multiple letter uh, magnitude. True. Okay, so that's what we'll do that local place, which I think makes sense. It's close, it's easy, and we like it. It's our snow day place. It's our snow day place. So maybe if you've listened to this podcast, you oh, can no, figure out the Oh no, we said it. And then also we'll do it from the Olive Garden, a side of linguine and red sauce. We'll do so this is the way the whole gimmick works. At the end of each month, we get um, a item that is Part of the theme of the month. So this month is side dish. So often at Italian restaurants, for example, you could get a side of pasta with some red sauce. And maybe it'll end up being something else if they don't have what we need. So I should say that. But that's the plan, Linguini. And what we'll do is go to the Patreon page. You'll see me blindfolded, trying a little bit of each. And then I have to make a decision which one I like better. We've done this with the uh, we've done this with a local versus chain place with chicken sandwiches. We've done this with pancakes. What else have we done? We've done this with buffalo wings. Yeah. Is that it? And something else, uh, right? I think like there's been another month. I don't even remember at this point. I think this will be really interesting. Yes. This, to me, will be the most fascinating of the bunch. Because I don't think either of them making fresh pasta. And that's where the real difference is. This could be like box pasta, you know? I think both places aren't making their own pasta. Which, which by the way, doesn't mean it's bad pasta. It just means it's not... Fresh or homemade, but it could still be very but, good. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is I don't feel like boxed dried pasta. There's like a huge variety, you know. Like, but the, but, but the sauce the, is going to play. It's the sauce. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh the, god. No, the like, sauce. So- or if you, I'll, to be fair though, you could not cook the pasta right. No, that's true. It you could, could be too soggy or too al dente, and then that's an issue. Yeah. Oh god. When I think like bad sauce, like do you know what comes to mind? I don't. The marinara sauce you get with like Pizza Hut that oh, is that like so disgusting. Ugh. It's anxiety. Driven. Yeah, it's like. Oh. Well, when I think of that, I didn't think of that was the last meal review, food review we did before getting coronavirus. Yes. So whenever I think of that Pizza Hut review, I think of then, I guess because we reviewed that pizza on a Saturday, Saturday night, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, I was sick. So I mean. I'm not saying I got coronavirus from the Pizza Hut, um, but, but I do think of when I walked into that Pizza Hut, when I was in there. I know. Ugh, oh, God, let's not get You know, there. I mean, uh, I would No don't. mask. There was no mask. It I was, it, okay, to, for people who are just listening, it was March 14th that we right, did this. Right, right, right. We didn't start wearing masks until like two months in, and we definitely would have if we yeah. had we known that was a thing. I know. Um, 
Ay, ay, ay. Although... But that's what I think of. The one thing I do try to do, and I'm in all these, like... Okay, like, Facebook is the devil. I hate it the most. I never post anything. But I am in a couple, like, m- new moms groups. And everybody's always being like, what happens if you get COVID pregnant? Is your baby screwed? I'm like, no, you're Veteran fine. Veteran leadership. Oh, uh, you're fine. In. Look, literally, I got it as soon as possible. So I have, like, a, the oldest baby that was yeah. in utero with coronavirus. He's great. We're great. Not Everything's fine. That's not the same. It's not. I'm not saying that flippantly that it's not a big deal. Of course, but, but and you should take it very seriously. But, yes, and we but, still, Matt, you and I mask up for absolutely even walks outside. Also on the Patreon page, well, not, not uh, mask etiquette, but you also get to see bonus episodes. They're on video, so there's a visual element to them, and uh, blindfold taste tests. Or blindfold uh, guest tastes, hmm. where you'll stuff food in my mouth. I have your pantyhose around my eyes, and I have to guess what it is. There's been some I've been good at and guessed right. There have been some where I've been repulsed. So uh, I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great extension to what the Mike Delivers podcast is. So I highly recommend if you like this podcast, head on over, check it out on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com, type in Mike Delivers, or if you have it, the app on your phone, download Patreon. Same way, go to the search item, type in Mike Delivers. One last note here for everybody. If you want to create your own podcast, I've co-created a company that can do that for you. If you want to do a podcast about sports, if you want to talk about cooking, or maybe it's for your business that you run and you think it'd be a great way to market what you're doing, I highly recommend you get in touch with me. Uh, It's theprosclub at gmail.com. Send me or my partner an email, and we can hook you up and start your own podcast. That's theprosclub at gmail.com. We've got some clients now we're working on, which has been really cool, and I'll just say it. Former um, NBA forward Scott Pollard is doing a podcast. He's now a realtor, and he's doing a real estate podcast, which is kind of cool. Also, like I get, it's just fun working with Scott because he's a great dude, and uh some of those Sacramento King Laker games, still some of the best basketball I have ever seen. Um, Jess, do you think there's a stigma around Burger King French fries? Literally never thought about that before. I think there is. Okay, Burger King is very light in my life. Like, I haven't, it's like an airport food or something for me. Like, I don't have a lot of Burger King. So I didn't know there was one. Maybe, now, let me just, uh, like, do you remember the Chance the Rapper SNL video that came out there about, like, things that are second? Oh my god, I yes, just, yes, just, yes, yes. It's just like McDonald's, and we tried McDonald's french fries and Burger King french fries to put it into side dish month, and we re- we tried them, actually, this was interesting, I should say, we tried them cold and we tried them hot, um, because, long story, which we'll get to, why they both came and different timing, etc. But, I want to say, um, with tying all of that together... Now I've totally lost track of where I'm going. This is happening to me back-to-back weeks mm. where I've thought of something, I then go in a different direction, and totally can't remember what I'm saying. Oh, uh, Chance the Rapper. Yeah. So he was saying, I think that's where we're going. He's making fun of Burger King for being like number two to McDonald's. I just think McDonald's french fries are like the classic fry, and Burger King are just like, they have, I mean, all, all french fries are good, I've, right? I, so I'm not saying they're bad, but they don't have the energy and the vibe that's something like a McDonald's would. Yeah, I've just paid them no mind. Like, there's no mind share for me in Burger King fries. Until, yeah. weirdly enough, this week. Because the Doughboys, and you had Mitch on the show, was it Tuesday? Past Tuesday? Yeah, and you, so we are recording this to pull back the curtain. How did I sound saying that word? Like you're having a weird mouth spasm. But how did it close your eyes? It sounded good. It sounded good, but it looked like you might be having a stroke. Close your eyes. Curtain. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so let me pull back the curtain and let me just tell you this. We're recording this on a Sunday evening. The podcast where I interviewed Mitch, which I hope everybody had already listened to by now. If you haven't, get on it. That came out on Tuesday. So you have not heard it yet. Although you have you have an angle if you wanted to hear the raw version. You wanted to hear uh you want to hear it live. So you have not heard the conversation no, with not. Mitch. Although people listening to this probably, and, and most of you have. Yes. So they did Burger King the previous week. Mm. And they did like a full gamut of Burger King. They did some breakfast, some... They, they go a whole hog, whatever yeah. they... They try like 25 things from a restaurant. And uh, the universal thing 
was that all four people who were on the show, so there's the two hosts and then they had two guests, they love the fries. They absolutely love the fries. And you were telling me it's a new recipe? They said they changed it. I guess it used to be more of like a breaded fry or like... Yes. Yes. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Um... So everybody was like, Dad, fries were damn good. They were damn good. <laughs> um, no, for me growing up, I was a Wendy's fry over McDonald's fry person. When Wendy's fry, and I don't know if this was like actual potato, but there would be some of the potato skin on the french fries to give the allure like Wendy's a little There's highbrow. definitely something in your teeth. Um, I do, You know, I don't think, you can't fake that. Like that's just... Being lazy and not cutting the skin off of a potato. Yeah, but it adds a little rustic flavor, like a yes. rustic potato. Yes, that, absolutely. Now, I actually, this is like the Permani, the Pittsburgh, the famous Pittsburgh fries, the Permani yeah. fries. They, I've seen, you can see them make them. They literally take one of those, like, French fry presses. It's yeah. so old school. It's attached to the wall, and they take it, and they lever, and they, and they push it down, and all the fries come out. And it's just a whole potato. They do not... They don't, you know, peel it or anything. So it is very rustic. I actually really love that type of fry. I'll use this opportunity to name drop slash check out another episode of the Mike Delivers podcast. Had Gus Farad on, who is a former NFL quarterback, lives in the Pittsburgh area. He came on the Mike Delivers podcast and talks about Permanis and if it lives up to the hype. So go back in the catalog conversation with Gus Farad if you have not heard it already. I do like that style of fry, too. I think it's delicious. I, you know, I think today was a good experiment in what style of French fry you like better. You know, yes. do you like the, the skinny fry? And not to say, which is McDonald's, and not to say that the Burger King fry was fat. It was, but it was way fat, But it was thicker. Well, and so Wendy's fries... Was, when, it, big, big... Uh, big boned. Big, I was trying to think of... I was, instead of saying big bone, I wanted to say big fried. Um, big fries. Big potato. So what I think would now that we've done this, what I think would be more interesting. Not this wasn't interesting, but I think Wendy's versus Burger King would have been really interesting. Yes, Wendy's. I remember them being potatoier and floppier. Yeah. Now here's my whole thing is I like I like um, roasted potatoes. That's my favorite form of potato. So if we have to like take a potato form, you know, <laughs> there's mash, there's hash brown, there's French fries. I like either a like a you know, like a roasted yes. potato chunk or like a steak fry kind of situation. Right, right, right. I like right. them potato we er. This is actually the second potato we've done in side dish month, which just tells you how creative we got. Well But I felt like But potatoes are huge side dishes. They are a huge side dish. But I felt like it was natural but well, and also too, I didn't want to be like it's now time to review the broccoli from Applebee's versus the broccoli from Pizzeria Uno. I do You'd have like, to say that, oh, like... They all suck. It is true. Steamed broccoli is on, like, every menu as, yeah. like, a... They're just... Somebody's in the back, like, opening up one of those steam fresh pouches. And they're just and like, being oh, like, this is the How, worst. What's your veg... Uh, what's the uh, vegetable of the day? And then they're like, What vegetable did you pick up from the stop and shop? <laughs> oh, we have a corn, <laughs> uh, carrot, and pea medley. Yes, it's excellent. <laughs> Very good today. Um, we've got the one that has the little medallion onions. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, we also have a vegetable. This one comes in a mushroom sauce. Uh, it, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Uh, no, those things are so... I'm sorry. It's going to be a couple minutes. Our microwave is down. I, I do have to say, like, I do... This always frustrates me. So you go to, like, a steak house or whatever, and the sides, it's, like, eight pieces of asparagus. Yeah. And it's, like... That'll be twelve dollars. You're like, what? They're big. They're big. Not always. No, no, no. Sometimes it'll be like ten asparagus spears with a little hollandaise sauce on it, which you could make for one dollar or less. And they're like, you know, fifteen dollars. Sides are a ripoff. I do think sometimes. You bring up, you bring up a steakhouse. Just I have been craving like crazy a good ass steak. We're having steak tomorrow. I know. I, I'm looking forward to. Do it. Do you want to cook it? No, but I will. If, you cook better steak than I do at this You think point. so? Eh, if I'm focused. Okay, so that's a no. <laughs> if I'm focused. I, I also have something else I want to talk about, but it's like food, restaurant, anxiety related. But I think I'll save it. I don't think it makes sense in the scheme of where we're going. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I've been, I've been craving a steak. But yeah, steakhouse sides are very expensive and fancy. But like the best steakhouse side to me is if like... Uh, crispy shoestring onions, not the onion yeah, rings. No, no, no. I was gonna say like, the, like frizzled onions. Like, and then they're all. Yep. I'm I don't totally know what the you. word is, but you would like put the onion through a 
onion circle round grindy. Dude. Like, you're like a mandolin, like I do, yeah. Or that, and you put it through that, and then you put you deep fry it because of the flour and the oils. Like, a good steakhouse has those, to me, with like, like a good kind of fun dipping sauce. I'm like, oh. Yeah. That, that with a good steak. I've been, Zach Gelb on Instagram, who I used to work with. He's been putting on all these great fucking food pictures. He's driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> I just want to like be like, Zach, you got to stop doing that. Yeah, no, that is definitely um, challenging when you see that. And you get it stuck in your head. Like, yeah. the, There's a couple like new restaurants around us that I'm like, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't well, stop thinking about it. I'm glad you brought it up because that was actually my food restaurant anxiety story. So there's a new restaurant in Bloomfield where we live, like a mile plus. It is, a, I will say, as somebody who walks, I, I have a two and two quarter two and a quarter mile loop that I do with Ryan almost every day so it's like 1.1 miles and if you're new to the podcast Ryan's our son not somebody Jess is sleeping with on the side yes or like a dog that I picked up but this this new place opened up and the whole story of how it is devastating which is yeah but there was a restaurant called what's it called it was originally called called Brookdale Tavern it's called Brookdale Tavern and very, this is very close to the Holston's Diner, which is the final scene from Sopranos. Yeah, it's and three businesses away, maybe. It's across a busy street, so that makes it a little farther, but it's it's very close. And I'd gone there one time with we, my... We went there. Well, I'm talking about for food. Oh, okay. I yeah. went there one time on a Sunday with my friend Jeremy, and we got like wings and beers and watched football or Ugh, something. I remember when you could do that stuff? I know. And then... And then you and I had gone there for a cocktail, and the food looked okay, but it didn't look like... We never really were invested in trying it. I don't know. Yeah. It looked very good. And I, for all indications, the restaurant was doing great. So I think the food was very good. Certainly busy. A great local pub to have in town. Not super fancy, but kind of nice. Yep. But not, not like... A not, nice... A very nice pub. Nice pub. Say. And um, just was kind of nice to have around in your in your hometown area. But then with COVID, you know, obviously that changes everything. And then the owner of this restaurant passed away from COVID. Yes. And that obviously just derailed the whole restaurant. Like, and it, it was just ended a fairly it. young restaurant. It, it opened up, I think, just like the week after we moved to this house. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's, it's like, so it's like, the, uh, really? It was very on par with that. Okay. Yes. Well, we've been here almost five years. So that's, that's how I, I okay. believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, so the, yeah, so these uh, these relatively famous chefs came in from New York City and once like, it cl- because the guy got sick, unfortunately passed away. The restaurant closed, and now it's been reopened as the Brookdale. It's called the Brookdale. The Brookdale, and they remodeled the inside. It looks absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. The bar, like I drove past I it know. today at the end of my Uber Eats shift, gorgeous inside. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is. I have anxiety because I really want to try it. I have anxiety because I really want to go in there. And, like, to me, nothing sounds better than, like, having a good Maker's Mark Manhattan mm. straight up, sitting at the bar, watching a fun sports game, and getting, like, some fun apps. at the t- Like, I... Ugh, does that sound good, Jess. I know. I know. I know. I know. I... Ugh. I had... My probably my last outdoor meal of 2020 yeah. this weekend with some girlfriends for a, bri- a bridal shower. I mean, it was nothing fancy. We went to the same place we always go, Egan's, and just ate outdoors. And it was, you know, it was nice. And then it got cold, and then we left. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, it's gonna be a long time till we do that stuff. But I definitely want to support them and yes. get takeout. And so we are. So that actually has. A good segue into our Thanksgiving plans because we are, you know, all fortunate to have jobs and, you know, be able to support local businesses. So we are actually going to support two local businesses right. for um, Thanksgiving this year. So that I actually feel very good about that. Now, I've never not cooked like all the side dishes. In the very last 20 years, I've done that, to be honest. Um, but... With the new baby and everything, and just the state of the world is just us and your parents. Right. It's four people that can, you know, support a local two local businesses, and we figure, heck, let's just do that. You know, it's easy right. for us. It helps them out. Like, let's just do well, it. Well, we had talked about, and this actually was a a switch at the very end of last 
of last week on Friday night. Oh yeah, I had a grocery list ready to cook everything. On Saturday, you were gonna go. You were gonna make the sides. My mom was gonna make um, the turkey and the a turkey pie and the pie. And I was all of a sudden, I was just like, you know what? Or maybe this was no. I, I sent you. I sent you a menu from a local restaurant. And I just thought because it's... Yeah, you sent me the menu. And then I just started thinking because it's five of us, four people that are eating the food, one person that's just going... Ah, 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 <laughs> he'll eat, it, he'll eat yeah. it like four hours later. All right, but it's four <laughs> people that are eating and then a cat that's going to jump on the table when he sees extra, extra food. <laughs> oh my God, we're, go, getting a, we're getting a chicken. It's a rotisserie yeah, we're chicken. Fu- we're fucked. Yeah, we're basically We got to give Leon a piece. It's going to be good <laughs> chicken too. Basically... I was just like, why are we making, doing all this? It's going to cost the same amount of money. Like, let's just, and I, and I get that. If you love, see, some people, and I understand that, love the experience of cooking and doing it in the tradition, but it's just the four of us. Let's just fucking mix it up, have some fun. We're doing two different places, Mish Mish in town. We're getting uh, a free range chicken. So it's, it's an Israeli restaurant. Right. So it's an Israeli restaurant, Middle Eastern style. The so guy is one chopped. Twice. Twice. Including Chop Champions. So, yes. on the Food Network. So, it's going to be a good chicken. Because, you know, if you want Chop twice, you know how to make a good chicken. Oh, uh, it so good. So, good chicken, hummus, pita, salad, Brussels sprouts. And then, the wild card, Jess, is we're going to Egan's. Not Egan's. But it's like sister upscale restaurant. And getting a bunch of fun stuff. Sushi. Oysters. Flatbreads. And smashed potatoes. Yes. And on the Patreon page, I did say I would be making something else. Can I follow through with my promise? Probably not. Probably not. You never know. That's totally fine. Uh, (laughs) No, I think it'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to it. And like, yeah, I'm really especially looking forward to the sushi. To be honest, that sounds so fun. It just to do something different. Like it's so different this year. It's four people. Twenty twenty to me is like it's the four of us. This year's been a shit show on so many levels. Mm. Let's just have a couple cocktails, eat some sushi, eat some oysters, eat some chicken, hang out with the baby, and just relax. You know, there's not... I've never been involved... Well, that's not true. This... I've had Thanksgiving where it's been me, my mom, my dad, and sister. One of the first Thanksgivings, Jesse, where we were together as a couple, I went and met my parents in Baltimore. I I remember that. And I remember... I think it was so weird you got dressed up. That totally freaked me well, out. We got dressed we, up because we went to a restaurant. Yes, but by the same token, I'd only known you for so we are first day was October fifteenth. So this was six weeks later. Yeah. My family is like, wear your grossest sweatpants to Thanksgiving. We are not a fancy Well, that, your uncle is, but your dad looks respectable. My dad wears khakis to eat breakfast in the but morning. But he looks good. I he mean, does look good. I'm not but, saying your uncle looks bad. <laughs> Trust me, I, I, but you know, but you know me. I don't get dressed. No, no, no. We, but like that. So I knew you would fit. Now, now I know you'd fit in. But I was worried that you were not that guy then. And I was like, oh no, he's a dressed up. <laughs> now you wish I dressed up a little bit more in general. Uh, yeah. Although, I mean, when was the last time you saw? I mean, I dress up probably now with everything going can on. Can I ask you an honest question? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> What's the question going to be? What do you? Th- what is your thought of my new work look? You mean like the one you wear around the house? How I am, I wear a full face of makeup, and I'm dressed from the top up, but I got gym shorts from the bottom I, down. I can't talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> it's a look. Yeah, I look super fancy from like... I think a lot of people are Belly button though. up. It's not just you. And I have usually bike shorts, socks, and sandals it's on. Not just, it's not just you. That's what everybody's doing. <laughs> I know. It, it is funny. We were doing Christmas gifts. We were like... We're very practical people. We're like, this is get me this thing. And I was like, get me these slippers. My sister in law was like, get me these slippers. And I thought, I hate is everybody s- getting slippers? I hate slippers. Oh, I fucking love I slippers. slippers. I like my feet to be naked. I could, I'd wear shoes to bed if I could. I don't get that. I don't get people that wear <laughs> shoes in houses. Hate, ugh. No, no, I don't. Well, see, they're my house shoes. They're not going outside. Yeah. And I'll bring your dad up again because this amazes me. My dad does sleep in shoes. I've seen your dad come home, shower, <laughs> and then put his shoes back on. I know. That, to me, is incredible. I want nothing more than to take <laughs> shoes off. But to go clean my body and get into the most comfortable... Like, you know what it's like after a long day of whatever you've done. Work, working out, you name it. And then you get into your comfies, and you're just like, 
a feeling of like, ah. Oh. See, I'm more of a- But to put the shoe back <laughs> on, that was... I saw that when they were here a few, whatever, weeks, I can't remember I don't know, they come every two or three weeks. And I so. was just like, what are you No, doing? it's very strange. Um, <laughs> no, see, I, I'd pull, I'm more of a Mr. Rogers person. Yes. Of like, I have my outdoor shoes, then I like to switch to my indoor shoes. Okay. Does that make sense? I mean. They're never going outside, so they're clean. Yes. But I don't like my feet to be in the wild. You and I have a different outlook view on on footwear. Yeah, for sure. I have indoor shoes that I've used now on outdoors <laughs> in the winter without socks. Oh God, I know. I want nothing to do with things <laughs> on my feet. Although I do like cool sneakers, but I just love the feeling of being barefoot. Like you hate it if I drag my toe. Yeah, you drag your toes all over the carpeting. It's you know why I do that? I pretend to horrify me. No, no, no. I pretend like I'm an NFL wide receiver when I leave a room. Oh, you're just trying to get you? No, 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 no. Are you trying to stay in bounds? You're trying to stay in bounds? So look at here. So I don't know if people can hear me, but this is the kitchen and then into this. What is this room? The den. The den. And it goes from, what is this? Um, It's like laminate into like carpet. Carpet. So I pretend like if I'm walking, I go like this. Oh, God, I I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I drag my foot down, I'm pretending to get my foot in bounds. Okay, all right, I see. Um, No, it's... It's disturbing. Um, the sound is horrifying. The worst part is when we're on a road trip, and I typically drive, um, and you just rub your feet on the carpeting of the well. That's a whole different. Of, of that's a whole different. The experience. passenger seat, which is like truly a nightmare. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Um, how did we get on footwear? Yeah, well, we were talking. <laughs> oh, we're talking about Christmas gifts. I always love doing this, and I, I think it's fascinating to, to do like. <laughs> Where the converna- conversation, where the conversation started, and how you got to a certain place, and I, the, this is where I would I thought of this was when I used to work at CBS Sports Radio. I did a morning show called Geo and Jones, and in the morning after every show, the two hosts and myself would have to go to my program director's office, Eric Spitz, and we go in there and we'd have to go over the show from the day, who are the guests coming up, and. The conversation, a lot of the times, it became like comedy hour. Like, who could be more funny than the next person? That sounds and there exhausting. Were, there were, I mean, there were funny people in that room. And I, I don't think I had fully broken out of my shell and how funny I could could be. To be per- perfectly honest, I think I'm the funniest of the group. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Say that to see if this podcast can get traction. Um, but anyway, everybody would be funny with each other. And one of the things we'd always come up with is like, how did we get on this topic? <laughs> and, and my program director would always go to get it back on topic. He'd go, back to the ball game. And then he'd be like, that was something that Bob Murphy used to say when he was in the Mets booth, when they would go off topic on conversations to get back to the play-by-play. So then I'll often, like when we get off track, I'll be like, let's get back to the ball game. I gotcha. Yeah, I, I noticed that too, like... um when I when I like ride the Peloton bike, they'll 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 get off topic. Yeah, they'll get themselves back on by like, all right, hands on the si- the handlebars. All right, one two one two. They have like they have like clutch right. phrases when they go too like off the rails to like bring it back. So the key to a good podcast and host is bringing it back. Okay. So Jess, for Thanksgiving, what's your thoughts on the time of day it should be consumed? I have a lot. Is it a dinner? Is it a lunch? Can dinner be had at lunchtime? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts on this, and I don't know where I truly land. Um, I've done it as early as 11 a.m. That's early. Yeah, it's really fucking early if you want to make a turkey. Like, truly. Are you in the mood to eat all that? I mean, I am. (laughs) (laughs) I'll answer my own question. I'm game with Thanksgiving at 8. I definitely Although I wouldn't want that early. I want to say the time we did that, I had an apple in the morning. And I was like, that's it. Because it was really about, like, how much you could, how much could you possibly eat. Like, my family is very much into the, like, just go. Like, we want you to eat until you, like, want to explode. Like, that's kind of our thing. Sure. So... I would say on average, I'm going to say average one to two thirty is like our time that we've we've settled on. Which, if you have a light breakfast, you're pretty freaking ravenous at that point. Yes. Um, and, and you know, typically it's either we either had it in West Virginia at my uncle's house, or they came to our house. Right. Um. So it really just the, the only thing is the turkey is a challenge. 
If you have a giant turkey, you got to start that thing freaking early. Yeah. That's the big issue with doing it early, in my opinion. The, otherwise, it's like, logistically, you can make, we would make most of the stuff the day before. We would have it later as a family, like six, seven o'clock at night. Well, part of this too was that when we could, so we could swing back to see my dad's family who would eat at six o'clock. Right. So it was just sort of a, so about an hour and a half drive back to Pittsburgh and we would swing by and see them. And there was no food left because there would be 40 people and 30 people's worth of food. (laughs) There was not a morsel there, Uh, but you kind of timed out well. And I've come to the conclusion that I think I know which time I like Thanksgiving. I like it between 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern. Or 3 three to 4, whatever coast you're on. I'll, I won't give a, a bias. I think the perfect time is to eat it between 3 and 4 o'clock. Well, let me ask you this. And I've come up with reasons. Okay. But go for well, it. Well, my question is, what is your, what's your eating plan before this? Because I'm actually thinking about that as well. For this this year, yes, or because I want to do a huge workout, eat something, and then let it ride. I plan on going to McDonald's and getting a Big Mac. Well, here's no, the, I'm kidding. no, no. I don't know. In Honestly, all, like in, a in couple ser- bowls of cereal. In all seriousness, I usually will run like I don't know, like eight to ten miles before Thanksgiving, and not I always tomorrow and or I next week always. Do, why not? You're gonna run eight to ten miles coming up. I mean, I could. No, you haven't, I, I, you haven't ran in <laughs> a year. No, no, seems like a bad I, idea. I ran twice this week. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did three. I miles. I didn't know you ran. Did you run so far away? <laughs> I ran three miles. I had twice. no idea you did that. No, I know. Like no, it, it, part of it is like my hip. It, seems like a bad idea. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna ride the bike. Um, no, my hip got kind of fucked up from being pregnant. That, that's really what the issue was. Um, no, but I went. Like, what is the eating strategy? Because I do have to say, when I would run in Pittsburgh, that McDonald's line was really full because I would drive, I would uh, run by the McDonald's. Which will be interesting, too, because I do plan on doing morning and afternoon Uber on Thanksgiving Thursday. I am curious to see what it's like. Yeah, and no, that should be order, interesting. Where, as far as how, the, um, how, how many orders I get, how busy it is, and then where I'm going. I figure a lot of McDonald's on that Thursday. So a lot of it. Yeah. Um, that is the one of, the, um, and then we'll get back to your reasoning. Thank you. So my mom, my parents now, this coronavirus has helped them embrace two things: one, working remotely, dark meat turkey. No, damn it. Two, um, takeout. So because right. we really did not do takeout very much, and part of it is because. The restaurants in Pittsburgh do not do a lot of yeah. takeout, especially delivery. Yeah, it's very different. little delivery. Very different. Um, but the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, my mom was like, "Don't you fucking mess up my yeah. my kitchen? Nothing. Like I do not. I do not want you to mess up my kitchen." So that was one of the very, very few nights that we were allowed to get delivery in my entire life, and that's why I'm wondering for. You know, the morning of Thanksgiving, is it the same it's situation? Like, like, there's a turkey in the oven. Like, you're not making bacon and eggs. Don't touch anything. Like, we are, this is, you know, Thanksgiving time. So, yeah. I am interested to, to see that. Because I get it. Like, or you have guests over. Hopefully, you don't. Hopefully, you're keeping it tight. But um, <laughs> just ordering bagels or something like that for breakfast so that you don't right. have to mess up your own kitchen. I like the idea of Thanksgiving between 3 and 4 o'clock. Maybe more towards the three fifteen ish time. Well, see, I go four. I go a straight four. I like the idea. I of hated how early we ate it. By the way, that early. Um, too early. I, 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 in truth, to be told, I can do whatever. I'm not like. I don't like it too late. The more that I think about it, like the later it is. What time was it last year? Six. I feel you know, like the it was problem late. is it was so dark out. I feel like we ate at midnight, but it wasn't. I think it was between 5 and 6. It just had the illusion of being super late because we drove in, got to the hotel, freshened up, changed, and then went. we went to Providence last year uh, with my Aunt Janet and Uncle Chucky did it. Um, but it just was so dark so early. But I think I like the idea of a 3 to 4 o'clock Thanksgiving because you have a lighter breakfast at like 9 to 10, and then you start to get yourself very hungry. And then, once you hit that 3 o'clock time... You have a nice glass of wine. You have a nice drink. <laughs> and you feel nice and toasty. And then you can glide into the food. But, for example, if you eat it too early, it's like a glass of wine at 11 o'clock. It's, it sounds a little early. It's been done. Also, <laughs> my family much. let us start drinking at 13, so... But that's 
like a like like, <laughs> like that's I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but that's early. And then what happens if it's too late? It's like you get hungry, you nosh on things, you have a couple of drinks. I feel like if you're at that middle ground, you can kind of because I'm a big happy hour person, you kind of glide into the night. Yeah, no, that's the issue with eating too early. Then you do kind of like you're so full, but you kind of do have to eat a little bit again. Right, but if you eat between three and four, let's say the night ends at six or seven, you might nosh on something a little bit towards the end, but you're not doing a second. You're not doing like a legit second plate. No, if you do Thanksgiving right. No, I agree. I agree. Although I, so I still am doing a little bit. I'm gonna bake an apple pie. A Dutch apple pie yes. from scratch, and I'm also going to make a pumpkin bread. So there's going to be a little baking the day before since I'm not yes. cooking. But um, I'm looking forward to trying this, something different, something unique. Like, you know, we kind of have the same-ish Thanksgiving every year. This is like, oh, this is fun and different. Definitely. Definitely is different. Uh, you said something, and I, and I wrote it down because I wanted to talk about it. The Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Oh, that big bar night. Is one of my favorite nights of all time. Okay. I think there's such a nice uh, relaxation to it. If for me, like in the last couple of years, working at CBS Sports Radio, doing the morning shift, like when you would leave the morning shift Wednesday, and if it was going to Pittsburgh, going to my parents, whatever, and you knew that you had the next, four, first of all, you know you have the next four days off, you know the next day tomorrow is going to be awesome. And that night is just like, you know you can just kind of like, let loose and Are you going to do fun. Uber Eats that night? I am. Okay. Things have changed. <laughs> I was like... This is going to be a shitty night for me. I'm going to be delivering, you know, pasta primavera to somebody in Kearney, New Jersey. <laughs> Not as thrilling. I don't know. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give myself a little relaxation time Wednesday. But there was... I, I just love that excitement of how... What's about to come. And then when you're younger, going out, seeing your friends. Pre-pandemic, when you were allowed to do things like it was exciting i remember when my parents had thanksgiving in woodstock three or four years ago three years ago that wednesday night what did we do Nets cat we what's that what did we do Nets calves were on we went to just jake's to watch the nets game we what? i made mashed potatoes on wednesday night and then we went to just jake's me and you mm-hmm. wow. and watched the nets don't remember that yeah we did okay. i'm positive um i will trust spencer you Spencer Dinwiddie played well the nets lost but I will say that Cavs team had LeBron James to date how long ago it was. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> just three years, but you get the point. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I think there's a great energy to that Wednesday night. No, I know. People I... are home from school. People are having fun. I know. Alumni it, are going out. It's horrifying it's me night. for this year, though. <laughs> well, because of the pain. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying in general. I can't, you know. No, no. It, I definitely remember we'd go to the gross bar in Pittsburgh and yeah. like in Mount Lebanon, the saloon. And it was so gross. I remember our, us early dating. And I'll just be completely honest. I had fucking terrible like anxiety with things. So I remember the first time we started dating. And you're like, yeah, I'm going out with my girlfriends on a Wednesday night. I was like, oh no. I hope she doesn't find I definitely went to hula hands that time. With with me? No, 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 no. no. With that's that I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, I went to Hula yeah. Hands with a bunch of girls, and I think I we got like artichoke dip and sat at a table. So, hey, I'm just being completely wild I'm just being uh, honest with the audience. But anyway, I just I remember that. I and remember, somebody posted a picture on Facebook, and you were like, "You looked pretty." I said that. Yeah, you did look pretty. <laughs> I remember. I know that picture you're talking about. Now I sound like really pathetic stalker. <laughs> Amanda's that was 12 there. years ago, yeah. Yeah, we got like artichoke. I'm still friends with all of those people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. 18 kids later. Yeah. No, probably. No, at least like 10 kids later. All right, everybody. So if you're listening to this on Thanksgiving. Ugh. Hopefully you're having like a nice like yeah. Thanksgiving run or like you're hiding in the bathroom. Thanks from for your the positive, f- positive spin from you there. Or you're like hiding in the bathroom from your family. You know, one of the two. Just like enjoying some alone time. Uh, speaking of alone time, let's get to French fries. We had two French fries that we tried. You're like looking at me like that makes no sense. <laughs> like, it oh, doesn't. No, like no, we did. I, I keep fr- thinking about the samurai sushi I delivered too. That's also giving me food restaurant anxiety. Another topic. We don't have time for it. Doesn't make mm. sense right now. Way, way non sequitur Jones. French fries. We tried to end side dish month. We got it from Burger King. We got it from McDonald's. Both from very different ways. 
from very different areas. Two different, completely different avenues to get us the food. So McDonald's, I actually picked up after dropping it off on my last Uber Eats delivery, which was Samurai Sushi, in North Bergen. It just so happened there was a McDonald's right by that person's house. Swung by, picked it up. I was a little confused when I went to get the french fries because the drive through it was like a weird McDonald's that was in like a mini mall. And the drive through was in this like weird entrance. And I went through and passed the drive through Oh, Jesus. I had to go in reverse, put down the window. And they're like, what would you like? I said, I'll have a french fry, small fry, and a Diet Coke. So I need a little caffeine. Picked it up, super easy. Could have been better. Picked it up, drove on home. Burger King, we used Uber Eats, Jess. Yes, so I'll did. let you explain the experience on that front. So I, I looked at the fastest possible Burger King. It was Patterson, New Jersey. So that's where those fries came yes. from? Yes. Yeah, it was. They were all like 40 plus minutes, and that one was 25. So. You know, I, that, I'm glad you answered that because I was going to say, where did you pick up the fries from? And how does that work? I didn't know you could pick the location yes. of the fast food Yes, yeah, so I put Burger King in, and then I, I dropped down shortest time. Interesting. That does make sense, though. So the one in Nutley is definitely closer, but it was like 40 minutes minimum. That's fascinating. Yeah, so... That's that, really interesting. And we, and we actually got it faster than the time that they allotted, so... I could... I thought that was interesting. I could say how much that order was worth... And yeah, he probably made between seven, eight bucks in twenty-two minutes. Yeah, I mean, he was really fast. The whole process was good, um, but we did an Uber Eats. That's fascinating. We did Uber Eats so that we could get them kind of ish the same time, and we wanted to try them. It was my idea. I'll be honest. Um, I wanted to try them cold. And Producer to, brag. Yeah, I wanted to try them cold. And I wanted to try them hot. Mm. Um, just. Because fries cold suck. And I know when we did this, uh, these episodes originally, it was always um, uh, heat factor. So we've changed that. It's now taste, but we'll talk about the experience to get there. Yeah. So the, whole, the, the actually, the Uber Eats I thought was really great. Like I, when I first put the order in, it said it could be seven thirty, and ended up being seven ten. Oh, yeah, it ended up being a lot faster than I thought it would be. Yeah, so that was great. Yeah, the whole thing worked out fine. All right, so let's talk about these. Freaking cold french fries. Um, the timing was a little bit different just from a transparency department for the conversation for the for the audience. Um, the french fries from McDonald's I picked up in North Bergen, New Jersey at 6.23 p.m. Eastern. Got home to the house at 6.50 p.m. Eastern. The french fries from Burger King were picked up in Patterson, New Jersey. Don't know the time. Although we could probably see. Mm-hmm. And then dropped off at our house at 7.08. So maybe both similar. I will say that the Burger King bag was taped up because it's an Uber Eats order. The McDonald's one, I just rolled up the best I could because it was a Mikey B pickup. Oh, interesting. They have different civilian pickup? Well, if it's an Uber Eats order, they got to staple, staple it up. Do, if it's, wait, do so, they? Yeah, civilian from, from a chain, yes. Okay, this is complete news to me. Like, why you're yeah. acting like this is like, oh yeah, everybody knows that. Does everybody know? Am I the only person who does not know that? I don't know. Maybe I have a little arrogance with me here. <laughs> um, no, seriously. If it's if it's if you do pick up if you do Uber Eats delivery from McDonald's or Burger King, they either staple it or tape up the bag. If you get the order as a civilian, they just give you the bag and you can dive right into it. Makes sense. It does make sense. Never thought about it. Didn't know it. So this is interesting to me. Yeah. So when I got the McDonald's bag, I rolled it up as fast as I could. Like if you were to get Uber Eats just a small fries, they would have to put it in a bag and staple it. Interesting. But it's also okay. what they do. And they use stickers. They don't staple it. But it's also to secure the fact that the driver isn't stealing the person's No, food. no. That's what I assumed it was. What Although you- if we could get some of those McDonald's stickers on the side on the black market, we could give them to Uber <laughs> Eats drivers to steal food. Go on the dark real web. Real scam. Yeah, real the, scam. Go. go on the dark web of McDonald's stickers. Uh, no, that, that's interesting. No, I, mm-hmm. honestly, I didn't. I never, I've never, i never yeah. thought about that being a different response. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. Uh, but with that said... The fries, I would say, the McDonald's ones were a lot colder than the Burger King ones. So if we're going to talk about the fries that were better... First of all, the McDonald's fry is skinny, thin, 
the Burger King fry, the new fry, is a little thicker. It's got a little more potato flavor to it, a little more potato in the fry itself. I thought on the cold side of things, the Burger King fry was a lot better, and it wasn't even close. But the McDonald's fry were ice cold. Do you want to provide your hot take? Oh or my. should I provide my cold take? Oh my god, that was amazing. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I did. You know what? Give your cold take, and then I'll give my hot take. Um, so I thought that the Burger King fry, also cold, way better. I like a potatoier, floppier fry, I guess. Yeah. Um, the McDonald's ones were kind of cold and hard, I guess. And this was, yeah, no, I thought there was cold. no different. I, so, the Burger King one was less salty as well. The, I don't even remember The McDonald's that one part. was definitely very salty. Mm. But it was like little and hard. <laughs> I don't know. Why are you laughing? I don't know what you're talking about, You're Brian. laughing at people that have little and hard <laughs> things? You know, obviously they work. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. And then you got to go feed them. Yeah, so don't make fun of people with little hard things. <laughs> you know? It's, right. You know what they say. It's not the size of the fry. It's how you consume it. <laughs> so what did you think of them hot? They were both a lot better hot. So you preheated the oven to 820, which I thought was too much. But I let you do your thing. Okay. Now, what did you put the oven on? Uh, 450. So we put the fries in the oven, and um, they both got a lot better. Uh, the McDonald's fry went from, like, terrible to, like, this is awesome. The Burger King fry went from... This is good to, this is a lot better. I'll be honest though, Jesse, I still like the Burger King fry, even when they're both hot, the most. And I know that's sacrilegious, and people won't say that, but I fucking thought it was better. I thought it had better flavor, better crunch. I thought it was a better french fry. Now, I will say, if we got them right out of the fryer, I think that would be a di- whole different ball game because of how thin the McDonald's fry is. You get a nice crunch to it. But when you're reheating a fry that was cold, I don't think the crunch came through as much on McDonald's, which hurt it. I thought the Burger King fry was the best. I like them both. Don't get me wrong. Hot. They both were good. They both were worthy of me lathering my body in them and soaking up the oily, fatty goodness. Leon the cat tried to bite through the McDonald's bag. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, pussycat. But uh, I'm going with Burger King. I am. I'm sorry. I said it. I said it. I said it. The Burger King fry was better than the McDonald's fry. I'll take shit for it. It's like we don't talk about this stuff before we podcast because we don't. We don't talk about it. Did we talk about this at all? We did not. It's got to be organic. We we did not talk about this at all. So cold wise, I was like, wow, these Burger King ones, they really are good. And I wasn't going on like the Doughboy's bias of everybody but being they like, probably, yeah, they were they good. they probably were not. They had better circumstances to make them not as cold. Better circumstance to make them not as cold. No, most of them had, did it like, so they have the Doughboy's credit card. I still card. can't believe that was from Patterson. And they could try them numerous times. And they said like, you know, the fries were always solid. Mm. Okay, so... The cold ones, I really like the Burger King fries. So I was like, all right, let's heat them up. Because there's a big difference. And, and we've talked about this previously. I don't actually think on the podcast, but in real life. about there's pizza that's good, and there's reheating pizza that's good. There's different. Sometimes you can Very reheat different. pizza, and it is terrible. Like, it's like yeah. dry and crispy or whatever. But re, so we heated up the fries, and I thought that the Burger King ones got better. And I thought that the McDonald's ones got Dryer, and there's also this tang to McDonald's fries. See, I think there's a tang to the Burger King fries. And no, there is a tang to the McDonald's fries, and it is there's beef extract in the oil because mm. it used to be beef lard. So then, can vegans have the fries? They are not vegan. They are. They're not. Yes, vegan. I already looked this all up. They're not vegan. Th- that's kind of. They're not even. Ve- they're not vegetarian. They're not vegan. They're not vegetarian. They can't. Do people do vegetarians know this? Yes, they do. Yes, I guess this is how like kind of you are with your no vegetarianism. Exactly, like some people don't have honey if they're vegan because the bee was involved. It's 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 a spectrum, obviously, yeah, right, right, right. and it's each person their own. Especially because now wow. I'm I'm dairy free, so I feel like I'm a big pain in the ass right now. <laughs> but um, hey, come to the dark side. Yeah. It, so 
I don't actually like that tang to the McDonald's fry. See, I don't taste tang, though. Oh, totally. I taste the tang to the Burger King fry. It tastes like beef fry. bouillon to me. What is that? Like the little, like, cubes you make to, like, to, like you put, like, a cube in water to make, like, beef stock. I, You know what? I'd have to try it again to see if I taste the fries and taste beef. They're right there. Just try them. No, um. It's a lot of work. It's so far away. It's so far. Um, I'm so comfortable in this awkward <laughs> chair. <laughs> um. I really liked the Burger King fries. That's why I want I want to do a Burger King Wendy's because I feel like the Burger King was more similar to the Wendy's kind of more potatoy, floppier fry that I like, like more potato. In the, I well, that's why I started this podcast by talking about the stigma with Burger King fries. What McDonald's is generally known as the best fast food fry. I just don't like them that thin either. But they are. That's not like a meat. I'm, I'm just saying, like on the whole. You put a gun to somebody's head, they're going to... I bet you two out of every... I don't know. Whatever it is. The McDonald's fry would win. Oh, yeah. I don't think... Have you ever met somebody who's like, fucking loves some Burger King fries? Like Nothing who, gets my rocks off <laughs> like a nice BK fry. But they're... I feel you. But I think an actual... Like, there's that, like, air of that. But yeah. an actual quality, I actually thought they were really good. Like, yeah. really, really good. I, I liked them. I like them cold. So I like them hot. So let's score these bitches. All right. Well, how are we scoring them now? Uh, we'll do combined score. Okay. Just mix it up. I'm gonna go Burger King eight, McDonald's six point five. I'm gonna go Burger King nine, McDonald's was also six point five. Yeah. I I'll, think I think it's ready. I think it's skating by on its name. I think they're too thin. Hmm. They're not potatoey enough. They feel more like. Do you ever have those Andy Caps potato fries? Have you ever had those? Andy Caps? What are you talking about? It's like it's like a bag of fries. But they are like I don't know. I feel like I would get them at Halloween sometimes. Like I have you no would, idea what you're talking okay. about. Okay. They're okay, this so think of this. You get like a bag of veggie chips. It's like in that kind of a bag. Or a bag of potato chips. Mm. And Oh yes, 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 yes. That, I know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, yes. They're like yes. thin and like hard and dry. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. There's, I don't know. I just. I know think, you're talking about. Yes, yes. Those, I just think that the Burger King ones were way exceeding my expectations. To be honest, like I, I thought they were much better. I, I didn't have an expectation because I actually don't think I've ever had them before, and I, I don't know if they changed the recipe, but I'm coming in blind. I thought that was great. Best side dish. Okay, well, let me take you a step back. That was fun to do. I really enjoyed this one. I think sometimes the simpler the concept the better it makes for a conversation talking point like we got fries from mcdonald's and burger king but i think this was a really fun episode to chat about it uh so i just want to say that but i'm surprised by the results but i respect the results i'm surprised by your thoughts i thought you would be so like no, I wasn't. into the mcdonald's fries i really did i did i know i think the burger king one does have a flavor though that you're missing why don't like, maybe it's crab well, so the McDonald's. I, I did don't a, laugh at that. I did a little okay, research. No crab. I did a little research, and it said that like the McDonald's ones were aggressively salty and like thin, mm. and they were saltier. I actually liked that they weren't as salty with the Burger King, which is weird. Because I like salty salt. food. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. All right, so Burger King pulls off the upset to end side dish month. I enjoyed this month. I liked it. You like this month? I did a lot. I really, I really did. Some of the months I like more than the others. What do you um, want to do next month? Well, we can't tell the audience yet. You got to go to Patreon to find out. All right. What? <laughs> what was your favorite side dish you had from all the the ones we tried? And I, you want me to say what they are um, again? No, I I really liked I like the Burger King fries, but I also like both the guacamoles. I thought you were gonna say I just loved the mashed potatoes <laughs> from Uno's. I got to be honest, I picked them up the other day. No, I... So let I, me just recap for the audience, though. Okay. Mashed potatoes from Uno's, mashed potatoes from um, Applebee's, uh, macaroni and cheese from KFC. Neither of those. Macaroni and cheese from Panera Bread, guacamole from Chevy's, guacamole from Chipotle, and then tonight, the fries from Burger King, McDonald's. I'm going to say Burger King first, second is going to be Chipotle, guacamole. I thought their guacamole was great. Yeah. Like, really good. I, I actually really like that. And last? Oh, it's an easy one for me. The KFC mac and cheese. Oh, it was 
horrifying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to agree with you, which is 100%. hard for us. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm totally with okay, you. Okay, all right. I completely agree with that. Yeah, no, Which the- is not... Un- I mean, you and I have similar but different taste buds. Like, we, we, we find common ground on a lot of things, but then we also disagree on foods. So I think it's kind of rare for us to come... To this kind of agreement yeah. on eight different foods that we tried, it's kind of rare, well, but I agree. Well, let's talk about that. Last night, we... So I cook... I try to cook six nights a week. was last week. night? Six nights a week, I try to cook. Oh, yes, that was last night. Okay. I get <laughs> You're like, what am I talking about? I get um, it now. Six nights a week, I try to cook. And then, like, Saturday nights, like, we get takeout. And I was like, let's just not get takeout from the same place. And it is challenging right now because I'm doing dairy-free, so it's not, like, as... I can't eat as fun as I'd like to. So I, I just wanted like a salad from an Italian place and you wanted Chinese food and we just did our own thing. And yes. I thought that was a good, like, why don't we do that more? I don't like Chinese food. And I'll tell this story here. You do like Chinese food. You just don't know it yet. Tell me more. <laughs> oh, no, that I'm not going to do. But I will tell you this story because I think it's ironic. This should come up on this podcast. I picked up the food from uh, for us after finishing the burrito today. <laughs> okay, I what you're saying. And I went to um, your your restaurant first, the Italian restaurant Cafe Giotto, which Frank Isola, by the way, loves. And if you want another plug, check out the Frank Isola podcast. Yeah, interview clearly he, he, he has amazing taste. Well, it's that in Matthews, which is like my parents' new favorite place. Mm-hmm. Anyway, point is, I go in there and I pay. And then I left. And then I picked up the Chinese food. <laughs> then I got in the car and I put the Chinese food in the back seat and I went, there's no Italian food here. <laughs> and then I like, I searched, the, like I looked on the floor I look, and I realized, oh fuck, I paid and didn't pick up the food. So I called the restaurant and I said, I'm sorry, but blah, blah, blah. Is it there? They go, yep, yeah, it's still here. The Uber Eats driver, who's made it his literal fucking career, went to pick it up for his family and forgot, paid, and didn't take the. I went there, paid, and left, and it didn't even occur to my brain that there was no food in my hand. Is alarming, not because it's like if you pay for food, you should take it, but the fact that I do this all the fucking time is really incredible. The one thing I can say, and I'm not giving you an out because I was like, you're gonna, Jesus def- you're gonna defend me. What? No, here, here's what it is. Whenever you have somebody box up your food, I feel like I've left it on the table. Like, Just, I do Uber Eats for a living. But I feel like I've done it like 75% of the time. The, uh, they that box up my food and I forget it. That was bad. You know what? Here was the thing. I had just put the baby in the bathtub and you were like, I'm going to be late. And I'm like, okay, good. I was like, I was running a little behind too. So it, it all sort of worked out. But I was kind <sighs> of like, how did you not? bring the food with you. So I had other things in my hand. Z- okay. Well, it, it all worked out. Not good. Um, all right, Jess, what was the best thing you ate this week? All right, well, the best thing I ate this week, I think. I really liked the gobble meal that I made. I do too. It was it was like a bang bang shrimp meal with coconut rice. Yeah. It was great. I'm sorry. I cooked it really well. <laughs> it was excellent. I thought that was the best thing I ate this week. Really? Oh. We're so in love. <laughs> Clean up that shitty diaper, Mike. No, no I, I thought so too. I thought it was great. Yeah, I was like, it. that was so good. Next week will be interesting when we talk about this. Yes, because we're going to have like all these sushi rolls, the oysters. There's going to be a lot the, of things to talk about. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I the did, sausage you know, stuffing I made. Oh, I have to say, I'm going to give us, I'm going to give a secondary shout out is when I actually ate at a restaurant outdoors. Oh, yes. Um, the calamari at Egan's was wonderful. I miss bars, Jess. I miss them so much. Not not for necessarily from like the booze. I just miss the atmosphere of having a drink and hanging with people. Well, it was really an cool. To miss ha- it. it was really cool to hang out with like eight girlfriends, and we got we got apps. I mean, but it was kind of nice to get apps because you would kind of like separate it like cleanly, and everything was you know kind of on the up and up. Um, that was really nice to do that. But the yeah, other oh, calamari good. was amazing. Awesome. And, and they gave you a marinara and the Thai chili sauce. So you Ooh. can kind of like do your own thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you do your own thing, do you swerve your head back and forth? Yeah, I do. Like I, I do. Like you're a cool girl from the 80s in a movie with 
Judd Apatow <laughs> directing it. Um, yeah, no, I'm all with, all about the movie montage. Mike delivers podcast episode 130. Thank you guys for coming here. That Side number dish. sounds insane, by the way. Well, there, there's that many of them. Yeah, that seems like a lot. I don't know it's why cool. that just felt like a lot. It is a lot. And um, thank you guys for for downloading this. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, the uh, the numbers keep keep rising. We're having some. Just, just incredible stuff. So I did the whole pitch in the beginning about Patreon. I do mean it, though. If you want more of this shit, head over to there, patreon.com. Next month, the the side dish. The dish will do. We'll, we'll reveal that on Patreon. Truth be told, we're between a few things. And we haven't quite figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. We know exactly what it is. That's what you think. Okay, that's what I think. Apparently you have other ideas. Jess, this has been the Mike Delivers Podcast. Side Dish Month comes to an end. We'll talk to you later. Let's eat some Thanksgiving dinner.